Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. This is Fanny, I'm back with Pokemon Brilliant and Diamond Vivid. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and smash out, shall we? So in the last one, we ended up starting off the post game with a small little easy challenge of just fighting Morimoto, where I easily was... I was winning in the first half, then I began losing, and then I managed to bring it back. So, this time, like I said at the end of the last one, we're gonna spend our whole time catching every Pokemon today. I do not want to do this, because frankly, this is my least favorite part of Pokemon games, actually catching all of them, because a lot of them are, like, <laughs> random encounters, essentially, is what I'm gonna call it. Like, RNG for the fuck of it, and I don't want to do this, but if I'm gonna get any, if I'm gonna get the post game done, I have to do this. So, sadly, I'm being forced to commit to this idea, one way or another, but on the bright side, this isn't hard. Um, so we're gonna start off, if you can tell, by going after the first of the three legendary spirits. I have no idea which direction I'm supposed to go for here. Oh, it's apparently in this route. Wait, it's right here? What the? Wait, is it actually? No way. There's no way it's in here. I should have bought more Pokeballs before I started this, but there's no way in fuck it's in here. I refuse to believe for a damn second it is. Because I get Rock Tomb. It, because the, wait, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Actually. Wait. Lots of Zubat. Wait, so how do I encounter it? Do I just keep running and I'll find it? Should I cross the water? Will I have to go out of the route and then go back into the cave? I don't fucking know how to do this clearly, as you can tell. I've never made it to this point. So I'm kind of just like going off of what I assume is right and wrong. Just gonna do this constantly until I run into it again or uh, presumably run into it. I might be completely wrong on how to acquire this thing in the first place. But I assume I'm going the right way, but, um, yeah, I kind of don't want to do this. Actually, in hindsight, maybe I should have caught that Zubat, because I don't know if I have a Zubat or not yet. But yeah, we have to catch all these Pokemon to unlock, like, the whole post game, and that kind of bothers me, because I really don't have a topic for this, and for the love of God, I think I should probably just start smashing the rocks to make my running a little easier on myself. But I'm not going to. Whoa. Never heard that before. Can I encounter the legendary, please? It's in here somewhere. Come on. Nope. Okay, well, I'm just gonna keep smashing rocks and then run around until I find it. But yeah, so I don't really have a topic for this one because my thing is I want to get this done in a way where I catch a lot of Pokemon because my issue is this. I'm not doing it all on screen because I know if I do it all on screen, we are going to be here for hours. And I'm not sitting here for God knows how many hours just to do something I'm only doing to acquire the entirety of the post game. So like, as I currently just smash away these rocks. Actually, you know, on a pure hindsight skill, will it move me off this thing? Because if it moves me off, then I know I'm in the, then I know I was going the right way by just standing there and doing nothing. Okay, so does it move me off? Oh, it puts me here, huh? Okay, so I could do a few more. Can I run into the freaking legendary, please? Okay, as I run into a Zubat, great. But yeah, I mean, thankfully we don't have to catch all of them. Like, some of them we just have their base form, so we just have to evolve them and that's it. Actually, I, I don't even think we have to evolve them. I think we just have to, um, are you kidding me? I've never encountered, well, I definitely encountered a Zubat. I am so glad I didn't accidentally click the Master Ball. But yeah, I mean, there, I could, like, where's I going with this? Oh yeah, we don't have to catch all of them. I think we just have to encounter them, which is great. Because I don't have the abilities to go back against Dialga. If I had to catch Dialga, well, I already fucked up then. So that's an issue that we'd have to encounter. Honestly, kind of wanting a Zubat right now. If I, if I were to play this game again, I would totally put Zubat on my team instead of a, a Estrella. Not, no offense to Estrella, because Estrella obviously proved why Estrella was on our team in the first place. But yeah, no, I do genuinely want to kind of just... Uh, if I were to go through it again, I would take a Crobat. Just because I really always want to use a Crobat. So I guess that would be my thing to do. How many times am I going to have to run through this before I eventually find the thing I'm looking for? Because I feel like it's going to take a while, as I just break through every fucking rock imaginable at this point. Okay, come on. Come on, show it to me. Show me the legendary. Okay, fuck me. Again, I wish I could pinpoint it more accurately. I really wish I could. It just gives you the area. Maybe there's a button I'm not clicking, but I feel like it's just this where I have to go off the basis of just run around until I find it, which is kind of annoying. 
Okay, of luck incest. What does that do? Does that guarantee I'm gonna run into it? Please tell me it is. If, please tell me that's what this item does. Uh, battle items. No, not that one. I guess it's in the other item section then. What about, what does it do? Uh, doubles any prize money. Well, that would be helpful if I was fighting trainers. Okay, I'm gonna give this a good old 10 more tries before I give up on this temporarily and then just go find every other fucking Pokemon I care about. Come on, give it to me. Give me this legendary. Damn you, stupid Zubat. Watch it's above is the thing. Like, that's my worry that it's, I'm supposed to go above to like the grassy area and that's why I find it kind of annoying, not gonna lie. I really wish it would pop up on the map saying, oh, mess spear is in route so-and-so and not just in a fucking cave where it could technically be anywhere in the cave. I like how we kneel whenever we go on this. Okay. Here's my question. How far am I going? Also, will it randomly appear in the water and or anywhere? Also, can I not run into Zubax 24-7? If I'm gonna have to sit through this, at least give me different Pokemon to sit through. Actually, the good thing is it doesn't require Arceus either, because if it required Arceus... Alright, we can catch a Spear Tune now, can't we? We have a lot to do in this episode. Okay, so I might... Because, well... Oh, Water Pulse. This would have been useful if we saw Philip on the team. Um, I'm honestly just trying to think of like anything to talk about right now because there was that because the thing was I was planning on doing most of the legendaries in one episode I guess we can say this is technically the legendary episode But technically it's not because I'm pretty sure these guys aren't native to well. No, they are native to Shino as a thing So I don't fucking wait Do not tell me it's switched Do not tell me I just saw the fucking mess spirit switch locations Don't do this game. Don't do this do not tell me the mess spirit switch locations. Don't do this. <sighs> Where is that? Wait. Okay. That is... Veilstone? Veilstone. Or like, right next to Veilstone. <sighs> Fuck you. Okay. Um, do I have an escape rope left? I'm 95% sure when I bought my escape ropes to escape from the cave that we were trying to get Lucario from, I bought like 10 of them. Okay, apparently I had more than 10. And I like how we just sent it to a godhood for a second. Great. Okay, well, um, instead of going through that pain in hell again, let's just do this. Because how do I do it again? No, not that. Um, what was the button for? Was it, or maybe I just go into here, because honestly I don't fucking remember how to do it. Because, let's just go ahead and do this, because the underground is going to yield me a lot more than anything else. No, I don't want to play with people nearby. There are no one nearby that I know that plays this. So let's quickly do that again. Use item. I would like to enter it and play alone. Okay, there we go. But yeah, so I guess this will lead me to more Pokemon than anything, because it, it, it just will. I, I know it will. I didn't want to come back down here, but I knew at some point I'd have to. So let's go through the endless cave tunnels and hope I ran into a, run into Pokemon I've never encountered. And honestly, that might be that one. That's a Roselia. I have a Roselia. I don't. The thing is, I don't know what I have and what I don't have, and I should honestly probably check my Pokedex for that. Um, again, I don't know for sure. Oh, I know I don't have you. Get get your stop circling me, motherfucker, B bitch. Okay. I know I don't have this in there, so. I guess we're kind of just going to go off with, with what I know, where I haven't seen, hoping that like, well, okay, any Pokemon that I see that I know I have the base form of, I'm just not going to bother catching or encountering in you are level 62. Flamethrower will kill it. How will this do? Okay. That was a crit, and that's a surprising part to me. Good job, Wukong, I guess. So, I guess now we're going to start encountering things of our level, which doesn't bring me much joy, because that means this is only going to get harder than it is, which also means I should probably bring more Pokeballs, because I highly doubt Ultra Balls are going to be, well then again, Ultra Balls might do a lot. Also, I think, again, if it's just encounter them, then I don't need to catch any of these people, and something tells me Close Combat's going to kill. Okay, thankfully, Close Combat didn't kill, but it does lower Wukong's stats a little bit. All these uses of Baton Pass, so G, E, it, whatever gender is. Swords Dance. Great, you revealed two useless moves to me. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you're definitely not getting used on this team now, especially because there's not even a Mega Scizor in this game, because they just decided not to put Megas in this game. Power Punch shouldn't kill it this time, and this should bring it right into the red, or it doesn't, and it proves me blatantly wrong. Great. I, again, I kind of don't want to do this, because like I genuinely don't have anything to say, 
um, outside of just complain about why we have to do this in the first place. And not to mention the... What the? Oh. But also, like, just... This genuinely is going to take so long, because there are so many Pokemon that I know I haven't caught, and a lot of them are luck-based. Okay, this thing has three moves that don't deal any form of damage, but, like, two of them increase stats or and or crit chance. I have no idea what the fuck, um, Paton Pass does, and then its fourth move is probably something on the lines of x -Scissor. Does it matter? If it, if it catches, it doesn't matter at all. I do remember Scyther used to be one of my, well, not favorites, but it also was, like, one of, in certain gens, it was, like, a Pokemon I would want to have on my team just because I liked it. Like, again, wasn't my favorite, but I did like them. I would call it Scissor if I actually remember to nickname it. But, or also then again, if I was planning on putting it on the team, I would have nicknamed it. Okay, I know I have not encountered you yet at all. I know that for a damn fact. Please be low enough level to where I assume a Quick Ball will work on you, because I know Quick Balls stop working at a certain level. Oh yeah, we can also catch Dittos now. Oh wait, no we can't, because we need the fucking National Depths, which is why we're even here in the first place. Okay, out of pure curiosity, if I throw a Flamethrower, will it die? It probably will, but I'm curious. Don't know why I tested that theory. I knew it was gonna happen. Okay, well, there goes that thing. <sighs> I don't want to do this. I'm like, honestly, I'm like gonna stall out for as long as I can to the 30 minute mark. Cause then I'll, all I know after that is once we hit the 30 minute mark, that's where I've given myself the okay to be like, I ain't uploading or I'm not recording anymore. I'm just gonna do the rest off screen. Uh, Cause I know it's genuinely gonna take hours. And then what I'm gonna do is once I'm done, I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna show you guys my progress, and then we're gonna, you know, get the national decks and all that stuff, and then we'll be good and great. Where's the two items? Oh yeah, we can get start fossilizing here. Okay, we can get fossils down here if I remember correctly. So let's just do this that I did before to get the frickin' um What did I even attempt to get before? And I've already failed. Oh wait, hard scale. That's what I was trying to get before, yeah, hard scale for Ellie. That's what I did this before. I knew it was something to help someone evolve. Where is the other one? It's right here. Okay, can I randomly run into the one that has a fossil? Because I heard you can get fossils from these. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh my god, I... If that's an actual fossil... I mean, it's a little late for that, but if it's an actual fossil, I'm gonna cry. Was it a fossil? God damn it. Well, I'll take a Firestone, honestly. Yeah, I'll take a Firestone, but... God damn, I really thought, I knew it kind of looked like a Firestone, but I was like really hoping it was just an Amber Fossil, a uh, Unified hey, Aerodactyl, I'll take an Amber. Oh, this is the one where you can get Togepi. Ah! Actually, wait, I haven't fought you yet. Also, hey, there's a Gabite down here too. Uh, but this is the area where we can just keep running back and forth and get Togepi. So you know what, I think that's what I'm going to do, because it's going to be hell trying to find this later. And then I guess in, yeah, I guess off screen I'll just catch the other fucking, I'll, I'll catch the legendaries of the group. Or I'll probably record them and then put them in a separate episode that's like, hey, at the end of this episode, off screen, I caught Mess, Spirit, Azulf, and whatever the fuck the third one is and proceed to not show it because that's going to be in the episode where how to catch all the legendaries and you change me to a water type you bastard close combat because <laughs> i'm pretty sure stab was the only reason i was doing that much to you in the first place oh my god it better be just encounter it better be just i have to encounter them because if i actually have to catch them i'm literally going to stall to the 30 minute mark and then i'm going to figure this out but get away from me you children. Okay, get this. The deep sea tooth. Oh, that actually might be useful for water types. And there's only one way out of this place. Great. Ah, I'm being assaulted by- Okay, thankfully the Bidoof just fucking sucks at aiming. Oh, god, I'm cornered. Okay, wait, wait, wait. And out we go. Suck it. Ah. Okay, out we go. And let's keep going back in and out until we find the Togepi, because I know we have not encountered that yet. And even if we have, we definitely have not encountered its evolutions. So where the fuck is... And actually, now I think about it, I'm in the wrong place to encounter Togepi. Great! So I can't even actually encounter Togepi. Okay, I know I haven't encountered you yet. Or at least I don't think I have. This, this is just a guessing game for me, really. Who, I, who do I remember seeing? Who am I more likely to see? God, do not do that again, please. I beg of you. That was... Scarring emotionally and physically in every shape or form. Okay, so I haven't encountered it because otherwise typings would have popped up there like it's super effective. Now that I remember you're a normal type, maybe I shouldn't have done that. 
because I know Mach Punch will probably kill it. I know Flamethrower definitely will kill it. This thing has like thick body or whatever that thing's called. Oh, special defense raise, right? So I could actually possibly Flamethrower it. Do I want it? Okay, it's Sharply. You know what? I'm gonna bank it on Flamethrower. Watch it actually survive, but it gets burned by Flamethrower because I think Flamethrower can burn. I might be wrong, but it might. I swear to God if it burns. Okay, good. Okay, so now we're gonna catch ourselves a Licky Tongue, which is great. That being said, it actually wants to get in the Pokeball. Who knows, it might not get in the Pokeball, and it might actually get in the Pokeball, and my job becomes 10 times easier. Eh! I, I'm literally just like fishing for any topic right now I can think of. Like, that's why I just won't shut up. I need to think of any, like, conceivable... Okay, fuck you, first off, for not getting in the damn ball. But yeah, I'm just trying to think of, like, any conceivable topic, really. Does the underground count as a cave? If I were to throw the dust ball, would it work? Because I'm, like... If it's between this and a Togepi, I'm catching that Togepi one way or another. Like, fuck this Lickitung, but... It's gonna fail, isn't it? Oh, of course when I say it's gonna fail. And after I flip it off, too, while it's in the Pokeball. Okay, well, we caught our Lickitung. I mean, not like it matters. It's not going on this team anyways, but... It's at least getting us team members, which is decent. Um, yeah, I guess that knocks him out of the way. You know, the funny thing is, too, I'm kind of waiting for us to see the haunt him. Okay, even though I'm pretty sure I'm in the wrong place to encounter a Togepi, I'm just gonna make sure, because I know there are certain places where you can go into the underground and you'll encounter Togepi here. So, oh, you motherfucker. Ah, okay, you move decently, annoyingly fast. Um, get out my way. I said, get out my way, you goddamn gibble. You know what, fuck it. Um, how about an artillery? We already fought one, so technically I don't need to fight this, but just in case you know, it is a, um, but yeah, just in case it is a, um, I have to catch them all, which in that case, I've already failed to do that twice now on camera. It will at least speed this process up later when I do most of this off screen because I don't feel like sitting through this the whole time. Especially because like with, with how I'm sitting, I don't have any back support. That's also why I don't want to do this because if I were to sit for like two to three hours straight like this, I will develop some type of back problem. Like, oh, okay, that did a lot. Good job, Wukong. I did not know you had Hydro Pump. I should have assumed you did. And apparently, now I know for sure Wukong cannot take a Hydro Pump to the face. Or, like, he can if he feels like it, but there are those times where he won't, because he literally had to do the anime survival thing. Also, that is a question. Yeah, here's my topic now. That is a question. Why did they make that a thing? I'm not against it, but I do... Oh, now you want to learn Flare Blitz. I've been waiting for this. Um... Well... I've been kind of waiting to do that for a while now. I guess now I have like the perfect excuse. I have a move that does recoil damage and a move that lowers my defense. I have like, th this this Pokemon is like a definition of fuck defense. We're on all offense. But yeah, so, like, um, trying to think. I want to call this man sucker so badly, but I don't want to do that. Um, anyways, yeah, why did they make that a thing or like a function in the game where they have like the anime health revival? I'm not saying that's like a bad thing, but at the same time, it feels like kind of that's a cheap way to win if that's how you win in the first place. I mean, then again, my other thing is this, and I'm not so sure that's the case. I'm 95% I'm sure they do, but, but since I don't know, do they shut that down in, like, official Pokemon tournaments? I mean, I feel like the obvious answer and the reasonable one would be yes, but, like, I feel like I could see reasons why they... Whoa, oh, I was about to say, that's a fucking cool-looking Pokemon. Oh, God damn it, it's you. Okay, wait, let's avoid everything. See what, what our options are. Whoa, there's a Gliscor down here. And I'm being chased mercilessly by every other Pokemon here. Okay, we're gonna go back and fight the Gliscor. I'm just coming around here just for the good old bend. Oh, Focus Punch, great. That's actually kind of decent. Oh yeah, I remember why. I used to love Focus Punch so much, and then I started hating it because I realized it was a two-turn move, which immediately deterred it in my mind. Ah! Oh, I forgot to heal, I forgot to heal, I forgot to heal. Um. Wukong, you're going on the bench for now, because let's be fair, you're probably going to kill everything I encounter. Razor, you're on, like, mostly par with half these guys. Like, I mean, you're the lowest level compared to them, but, like, you'll be fine. You should be able to handle these. I'd be damned if you can't, especially because, like, a decent amount of them you have some type of stab against. So, let's hit Gliscor with a Dragon Claw. Oh, this thing's even barely above Razor. Honestly, though, Gliscor is one of my favorites, and I wanted to get a Gliscor on my team. My thing is, I forgot how to evolve a Gliscor, and also I just couldn't find one, and I didn't know how to find one, and I was more focused on trying to have, like, you know, my Garchomp, my Togepi, which I just gave up on, which I couldn't catch because of the fucking National Dex rules. 
I forgot you had guillotine. Thankfully, you missed. But, yeah, I, I, this is also one of those good times where I'm like, I am so glad um, these things, I'm not playing a Nuzlocke. Because, one, I definitely would have lost by now because I did lose to Cynthia off screen. I mean, I could have just lied to everyone and no one would be any the wiser, but still. Um, but then also the fact that I know I've had another close call with that during the main game where another hit like that did almost hit and then it missed and I was like, oh my god, yes. And I know I would have had like a heart attack if if it actually did hit. Get the fuck away from me, you stupid Golbat. Actually, then it's going to be easier to catch you. I forgot, does Golbat evolve from Zubat by friendship or does Golbat evolve into Crobat by friendship? Or is it both? I'm 95% sure it's only one of them, but I don't remember. Okay, let's try to catch you. Um, I presume this won't kill you. I presumed right. Okay, let's see. Dragon Breath has been known to kind of not do enough damage. Watch this be the one time it hurts something. Come on, Dragon Breath. Do what you do best and don't kill something. Okay, fuck. The one time. The one... Fu I remember when we were didn't have any other move. And we had to use fucking Dragon Breath. And Dragon Breath never did goddamn anything. And the one fucking time I needed to not kill. And it kills. Story of my life, people. Story of my life. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and take down this Golbat. Uh, oh, okay. He's. Oh, yeah, Fashion. Thanks for reminding me. Because um, I... Um, there was that fashion outfit that we saw at the end of the Let's Play when we did, like, the end screen. Oh, nice job, Razor. You put that in, like, the perfect range. Good job on that crit and perfect range and health. But yeah, that outfit that we saw, I haven't gone back to Veilstone yet, and I kind of want to fly back there and, you know, check. Can we buy that outfit? Can we not buy that outfit? Is it worth going all the way back to Veilstone for? Honestly, yes, because then that means I can catch my Togepi and have an excuse to leave the areas. But as I get hit by a Venoshock and hopefully don't get poisoned, I don't know why I always think Venoshock can poison now. Maybe that's just my, like, fear from Black and White 2, where I don't even think Venoshock poisoned back then. If it did, then I just am remembering it properly, and I'm just doubting that memory. Okay, go back. Listen, can you just stay in the fucking ball for, like, five seconds? I don't even need to catch you, because I have definitely fought more than enough Golbats, and I have burnt over half of them with Flamethrower, and the other ones probably died to a Discharge, or not Discharge, but something from Nyla. So if you don't mind, just stay in the goddamn Ultra Ball and let me move on with my life. Thank you. See, when you start threatening them, that's when they get in the Pokemon, because they know their life is in danger. Good job, Razor. You are handling this. Also, I'm glad that Razor's finally getting experience now again. Like, I feel kind of bad Razor didn't get to, like, take someone down. I mean, granted, neither did Trigger in the Cynthia match, but, you know, I, I felt bad that, like, not everyone got to take someone down, or neither did Ellie. Yeah, you know, that's the weird thing that I just now realized. That no, the only the three main members actually took someone down. Um, Nyla took down two Pokemon, I think. I think Wukong took down two Pokemon. And then I know um, Estrella. Estrella didn't take down two Pokemon. Ha, huh, maybe um, not Nyla. What's his name? Um, Wukong got one Pokemon. Because I honestly don't remember. but Or three Pokemon. Because I know he took down the Roserade for sure. I know he took down the Spirit Tomb for sure. And something else. Oh, Murkrow. Ah! Get over here, you. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I feel kind of bad that our second, like, our second set of three members didn't get to do anything. I mean, to be fair, though, Ellie, I walked into that with a strategy specifically designed around her to be the final Pokemon. And freaking Cynthia was like, nah, let's not. Took a whole 180 on that strategy and used Swords Dance right from the beginning with the Garchomp battle and proceeded to fuck over Ellie in the biggest way possible, which goddamn sucked. But that's just how it goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and sometimes Cynthia just gives a big F you. That rhymed on pure accident and it's so funny that it did. But oh, a uh, Baneri. I was about to run into it, then I remembered I definitely do not need to fight it because I've already caught one. And I ran into a barrel. Well, um, but yeah, anyways, um, I hate the fact that Razor didn't get to do anything, or Trigger got to do anything. I mean, granted, in the, they did more here than in this battle against Cynthia than the original one, because in the original one, they did jack shit, because I kept them, because my team was doing really good against her early game team. She threw down the Garchomp, and I had everyone up still. Garchomp just wrecked through the team, and I, I still could have won, like, that's the thing I keep saying, because it's true, I could have genuinely won if I wasn't trying to win with Wukong. 
if I was just trying to win in general in that match, I could have beaten Cynthia because I wouldn't have taken the risk on a mock punch and then I would have had the um, Ice Fang of Ellie to kill because he didn't sword dance yet. But nah, I was dumb and I just decided I was going to win this with Kong and I failed miserably. But I mean, outside of that, then we made it to like, you know, the one that happened on screen where Estrella just straight up hard carried. But it's sad because I really did train Razor and Trigger for that match. I assumed Trigger would have done something, but I guess when she had her own Lucario, I kind of just, like, my hopes fell to fade because I knew that Trigger wasn't going to win. Because I had playing Trigger to fight against a Togekiss, and granted, I didn't think Trigger would beat a Togekiss, but I assumed it would at least struggle against it, or force the Togekiss to enter a struggle with it. And Razor, okay, listen, I knew Razor wasn't going to win anything going into that, but I was like, well, outside of the Spirit Tomb match, but I didn't want to throw it against the Spirit Tomb because I knew it would be under leveled compared to the Spirit Tomb. So I was like, we're just going to deal with it, see where it goes, throw out um, Razor and pray for the best. Um, yeah, so Razor going against the Lucario was very helpful until her Lucario straight up took out my attack and I proceeded to cry on the inside because Razor didn't get to take out Lucario, which had been very funny payback for what happened in Journeys where Cynthia's um, car trump was taken out by Ash's Lucario. And in this case, it was the opposite way around where my Garchomp lost to her Lucario. I think today we have all learned between this and the anime that in a match between Garchomp and Lucario, whether it's regular or not and Mega v not Mega, it doesn't fucking matter. Lucario will always forever be the winner of that matchup for some stupid reason. Which actually now brings up a point in my mind that I now realize. She didn't Mega Evolve her Garchomp when she fought against, um, Ash. Because she, you know, Dynamaxed the Togekiss for some fucking reason. I mean, I don't know why the reason- I know what the reason is, it's just dumb in my opinion. But, like, you know, in my mind, I question now, would he have won if she didn't- if she didn't Dynamax the Togekiss and instead just Gigant- or not Gigantamax, uh, Mega Evolved her Garchomp, which is obviously the better option, because, you know, it might sacrifice speed, but it has, you know, power and stab. Because, like, even then, Ash's Lucario, I mean, I think it only won just because, like, Surf Edge did a decent amount of damage. And, it, actually, I don't think I fought a Magnite. Or if I have, it's just been so long. But, yeah, so, you know, it's that type of thing where now I'm starting to question that. But either way, I've learned that in a match, no matter what, it'll always be a Lucario that beats Garchomp. Watch, I say that, and I throw... Actually, no, it's a blatant lie because my Lucario failed against her Garchomp. I think it only works when it's just, you know, whatever the anime character fe feels like. You know, if they want to win, then yeah, they can win. If I'm supposed to lose, hell yeah. Also, fuck you for trying to use Zap Cannon on me. You're not Ash Ketchum where you can defy the laws of physics with um, Electro-type v Ground-type moves. Wow, you survived that. Well, I'm not gonna say I hate that, because I'm kind of glad you did, because I forgot I was trying to catch you. So, we've kind of ran into that 27 minute mark. I know we haven't done much for catching, but I did say I was gonna do most of this off screen. I, like I said, I'm not sitting here for two hours trying to, I mean, I will sit, I will sit for two hours trying to catch, but I'm gonna sit in a more comfortable spot, and I'm definitely not gonna be able to keep commentary up for two hours straight, because at some point I will just go dead silent. So, why you tip it to the side, I have no apparent reason. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go off screen, I'm gonna catch the legendaries, but I'm gonna record the legendaries for their own separate video later. I am going to catch the rest of the Pokemon, and when we get the National Dex fulfilled, I will come back and, you know, do a thing. Also, that big area, I have no idea what's in there. Actually, no, I'll show off with the big areas, because I know we haven't done that yet. So, Razor, if you don't mind, can you quickly kill this thing? I'm gonna let this- I'm gonna let this one battle play out, I'm gonna go to the big area, and I'm gonna leave, and I'm gonna come back with the footage of me getting the national decks, and then hopefully the skunk tank goes down and- or just suicides. Great. Well, that made my job easier. Oh, I didn't know Dig would avoid that. I- you see, now that, like, Earth- now that I've learned that Earthquake can hit shit that's digging, I've always been like, everything can hit while I'm digging. Like, so now I'm always paranoid of that. Thanks a lot for that one, Earthquake. Fuck you. But, um, oh god, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm lost. I'm lost. Uh, okay, over here we go. Because we're gonna take this exit, and we're gonna go all the way down to here and here. I mean, I know what these big areas consist of. They're just, like, really big areas. Oh, you're here. Uh, gorgeous stone box. 
Nope. Cool. Um, anyways, let's go down here. And it's just a sunlit cavern. That's it. Just a bigger sunlit cavern than any sunlit cavern you've encountered. Well, I'll be back when I have the National Ducks, but technically for you guys, this is the, or not the end of the video, but like for me, it's the end of this particular part of the video. So I'll be back when I have the National Ducks. See you all then. There wasn't actually much work to be done because all I really need to do is find an unknown, which is findable in a certain part of the game. Uh, all I had to do is find a chip. Ch Chata, which was also very easy to find. I also only had to find a Motham, which was just battle by trainer. And then the other two was a tentacle and something else, which I know I fought a trainer for. So really, I could have actually shown it on screen. If I had just gone through my Pokedex, I would have been fine. Because the only Pokemon I caught off screen, which I hadn't encountered yet, was Cherry Bend, that like grass type Pokemon. So yeah, it didn't really take that long and I really wish I would have just checked the Pokedex on screen. Also, for you guys it's different, but for me, cause I recorded a different video in between this one and the other one, or like the other half of this video, is if you, as you see, I have a new outfit in the form of the summer outfit. You automatically get this acquired to you the second you beat the champion. So now that we finally have the whole Pokedex done for at least for Shino, Oh yeah, I also caught Di I also caught Dialga off screen again. I didn't need to, but I did catch Dialga off screen. I fought the two, I fought the three spirits. Uh, well, I battled Mesprit and I killed the other two. But that aside, let's go ahead and finally get the Shino Dex. I don't know if we can just walk into Elm or not, but let's do this. Hi, Ezel, you're friends with that elder of Celestia Town, aren't you? She told me that she had something she wanted to show you. Oh yeah, well, uh, I don't think you need it for the Pokedex, but essentially, if you come to her with the other Legendary on your team, she'll end up showing you the other box out Legendary. So if you show up with Dialga, she'll give you Palkia's information. If she shows up with, if you show up with Palkia, she'll give you Dialga's information, but she won't give you the Pokemon. So, as we have finally done this, let's go ahead and talk to you. As I just remembered, I'm doing my Shining Pearl Let's Play on the side, so I can catch up to this point and do the version exclusive scene, which is only one scene, but granted. Ah, uh, Ezel, you've come to show me your progress on the Pokedex. Yes, hmm. So you've seen 149 Pokemon. You're not... Bitch. I know what he wants. I know which one it is. It's the one from Celestic Town. I fucking knew it. Please tell me I can fly there. It's right here. The thing is, it wasn't in the Pokedex. I literally scrolled through the Pokedex, took notes on who I needed to see, and I went to go see them. This was not on there, but I guess it doesn't matter, because as long as I find her, I can just quickly get it. But it, it, it's fine. It's annoying, but it's okay. Where is she, though? Seriously. Okay, so she's not in here, uh, next to the runes. Great, so now I have to go rambling on to find her. So she says she was in Celestic Town. Where in Celestic Town could she be? What house do I have to break into again? Which is another funny thing I like to think about, like how a lot of these people leave their doors unlocked for you for whatever reason, which is kind of dumb. Oh, that guy might either trade you something or give you really powerful moves. In hindsight, I probably should have talked to him. But also in hindsight, I don't care. That's the route. Um, is it this house I have to go into? It is not. Wait, you buy? Oh, shit, you're the Pokemon right here. Oh yeah, also off screen, I did some battles with the verse recorder because I figured out how to work it. God, the verse recorder takes so much time. I really do wish they just did the Omega Ruby off a of Sapphire thing again because that was fun and it didn't take time at all. Um, oh, there we go. Mount Grant acting up has me concerned too. Well, this is what I found this shrine a book. It's quite old, see for yourself. There's Palkia's description. It reads Palkia, the Pokemon that binds the special, di special spatial dimensions. It seems that there are two Pokemon in ancient Shino. They're respectively sort of symbols of time and spatial dimensions. Ah, uh, goddammit, I accidentally talked to you again. Okay, give me a second. I don't want to talk about Palkia. Leave me alone. Okay, there we go. So now that I have seen all Pokemon, I know that for sure. Because there's no way in hell that I don't have everything. Because I checked multiple times before I did this video. That was just a, like, random BS situation. But presumably, I can walk in, get Oak to, sorry, not Oak, roll in to see my Pokedex, rub it in his fat, old ass face, Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, you know kind of Pokemon. Have you seen Sharon rolling your Pokedex? No, I have not. Okay, that's confirmation right there. We are good. It only took that to do it. Great. Now, without further ado, Rowan, go child. Ah, uh, Ezel, you've come to show me your progress on the Pokedex. Yes. Hmm, so you've seen 150 Pokemon. Bravo, Ezel! You've recorded all the Pokemon of the Shino in your Pokedex. This will help me, this will help immensely in with my studies on Pokemon evolution. I did not know Oak was in this game. 
Greetings, Professor Rowan. It's been a long, very long time. I'll just tell you, Shinnoh certainly is a long trip from Kanto. Of course, if it means meeting new Pokémon, there's no distance too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected as much from the World Authority on Pokémon. We always used to joke, where there are Pokémon, you'll find Oak! It's good to see that hasn't changed one bit. Professor Oak, let me introduce you to my young assistant. This is youngster has filled every page of the Shinnoh Pokédex for me. Ah, oh, well, very good to meet you. As you've heard, my name is Oak. I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in his praise about a fantastic young trainer. I see that you live up to know that you've surpassed his praise. You've also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see, I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He'd asked me to bring the data for National Pokedex. Oh, there we go. So since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex to the National Mode. After all, there are many kinds of Pokemon in this world of ours. And now we have the Aspects, which also means we can catch the original star, or not the original star, but we can catch the other star, so now we can catch Pinchbluff and Turtwig, but also, finally, the real post game can begin! Of course, not in this episode. I'm not, I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete the National Pokedex, however, I'm sure you'll make an honest attempt on your our behalf. Have no fear, Ezel, we'll get the job done. Oh, Ezel will get the job done. By the way, Professor Oak, what compelled you to visit this region? Oh uh, yes, if I remember that Ramses Park is now open. If I remember correctly, it's an end of the Route 221. Ramses Park has a special system that act tracks every imaginable kind of Pokemon from every region. I've come to make certain that that system is operating properly. As well, you should make an effort to visit Ramses Park too. Oops, I'll be late again for a meeting if I don't get going. Okay, it was a pleasure meet seeing the both of you. Bye now! And there goes Oak. Off he goes, as busy as ever. Now, Ezel, I have a gift here as, as your reward from completing the Shinnoh Dex. And we have the Poké Radar, now we can track Pokémon easier. Great. That's the Pokémon Radar, or just the Poké Radar for short. Use it, and it will indicate grass patches where Pokémon are lurking. I prepared to help this help find my, my field assistants put together the Shinnoh Pokédex, but you took care of that. I'm sure it will be useful for your goal of fulfilling the National Dex. Okay. Well, there's only one more thing left to do, and that is walk out this door. There we go. No, I was like, thought he was gonna walk up to us, not just do that. Hi, Warp. Hi there, Ezel. No long time no see. Well, I've been, when I heard that you defeated the Elite Four and entered the Hall of Fame, I rushed straight here to congratulate you. I mean, it's a great job. All the other gym leaders are really happy for you, too. But you know, the gym leaders aren't gonna take this lying down. Losing to you was a rough, was a rough on all of us. Yeah, we still have our pride as Shino 8's gym leaders. Now we're all determined to beat you this time. So if you don't mind, could you give us all another chance with a Pokemon battle? We'll each be waiting for you at our own gyms. You know where to find me, or Bird Gym. So I'm not so sure if you can go out of order in that one, or if you can just fight them whenever, but yeah, so we can officially fight them again. Oh yeah, John has a kid sister, which we'll go over later, but yeah, so I'm gonna be here in the next one. I have no idea what we'll do. We probably won't do the gym one yet, because I'll probably run through that with a pro possibly my Pearl team, who knows. But now we can officially start the post game. We have so much to do. Catch the legendaries, do the battle zone thing. Uh, just explore the battle zone more, do the gym thing all over again. It's a whole lot we can do. So without further ado, I'm gonna end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join Discord, follow Twitch. I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to check us out.